Uh, Ishbel here. Um, so if you were with me this week to do the Glutes 101 workshop, this is a quick review of all the exercises that we did. Uh, one of my goals whenever anybody comes to a workshop of mine is that I want them to be able to take the information that they learned in the workshop and apply it to their daily life and their daily routine. Um, it's one thing to come study with somebody like me for a couple of hours or even come see me a couple of hours a week as a private client. It's another thing to really start applying this information to your daily life. It's really those daily practices that people start to see and um, the most profound changes happening. So, uh, first page of our Glutes 101 workshop is our principles. So I'm gonna be referencing these principles throughout the routine. Uh, rewriting old patterns, relaxation and conscious movement. Neutral pelvis equals strong glutes. The ab glute sandwich delicious sandwich that it is, the glutes versus other hip muscles, and then isometric engagement and muscle memory. So our first exercise is relaxation and conscious movement. I have here two weighted balls. You can buy these online if you don't have them. Um, they're two pound balls. Um, you could also just use tennis balls. That works out just fine as well. Um, you're gonna lay down on your back and place a ball underneath each butt cheek. And we're gonna to start to do pelvic rocks. So pelvic rocks are basically moving your pubic bone towards your belly button so that your low back starts to drop down and then reversing it, drawing your pubic bone away from your belly button so that your low back starts to lift up a little bit. You're only moving your pelvis through a range of motion that feels comfortable for you. The goal here is to relax the glutes completely and to allow the muscles of the hips to drop down deeply into these balls so that you can create a massage for the deep hip muscles. And then we can come back to neutral and we're gonna do little leg releases. So you can let one knee drop out to the side and then use your inner thigh to bring it back in again. All the while you're really, again, trying to relax your glutes into that massage. And these initial exercises are here in this particular order throughout this routine to help achieve maximum results for engaging the glutes. And one of the biggest impediments towards strengthening the glutes is having really tight hips. So this initial exercise is here to help relax the deep hip muscles that can oftentimes come in and um, interrupt or intercede for the glutes. We want the glutes to be our primary mover and thus those deep hip muscles need to be in a more restful state. So good massage is always a good way to do that. You could also rock your knees from right to left. You'll find oftentimes that one hip is way more sore than the other. If that's the case, you could stay on that side. So say it's my left hip that's real sore, I'm gonna stay rocking my knees to the left. And then I'm just gonna open and close my left knee because that way you're taking the head of your femur and you're moving it in your hip joint against the pressure of that ball beneath. So it's a really nice massage. You could do that on both sides, of course. All right, so we're gonna take those guys out. Sometimes, you know, I'll spend a half an hour watching TV and have my butt massage and it feels amazing. And oftentimes if you have low back pain, Doing that for, you know, five, 10 minutes will make a considerable difference for you. So we're gonna come up now into standing. We're gonna talk about a pretty classic exercise, the squat. So my feet are about hip distance apart. When we talk hip distance, we're talking hip bone, not like the three feet wide that most women think that their hips are. We're talking hip bone, okay? So you're gonna to start to sit your butt back. Imagine there's a stool behind you and you're sitting way, way back. So speaking again about neutral, neutral is where your pubic bone and your tailbone are on the same line. 
and your pubic bone and your hip bones are on the same plane in front. So as I sit my hips back, I'm hinging at my hips and then standing straight back up. What we do not wanna do is called a tuck. You do not wanna pull your tail underneath, at which point you lost the curvature in your low back. Again, we're looking for a really defined, deep hinge in the hips. That way, when you stand up, you're using your glutes. So now we're gonna work on one of the principles, which is conscious engagement. You're gonna engage your glutes to help stand you up. And then you're taking a deep hinge to sit back. Another one of the principles is neutral pelvis equals strong glutes. Again, if you get out of neutral and you tuck under, try it once, unless it hurts. Don't do it unless it hurts. Tuck your butt under and now try to engage your glutes to stand yourself up. Usually what people will feel is that there's a gripping where the hamstrings insert into the glutes. That is not what we're looking for. We need those glutes to be our primary mover that will then allow the hamstrings and the quads to come on board to help, okay? All right, so thus far, we've gone through some relaxation pieces and massage, and then we've started talking about conscious movement, conscious engagement. So the process here is learning how to cue up a certain muscle group and use it. So we're gonna now do the hip lift. Again, feet are about hip distance apart. We're gonna be in neutral. Engage your glutes, again, without tucking your pelvis, without losing neutral. So you're gonna consciously engage your butt and then lift the hips straight up. Again, we're looking for a hinge at the hips. And then you're hinging straight back down. So again, these exercises are ordered in a way that is meant to teach you um, alignment principles as you go along. So the information that you just learned in the previous exercise in the squat, you're gonna use that in this hip lift. So you're thinking hinge at the hips. Again, you're not coming up and then tucking your butt under and flexing your low back, okay? We're working from neutral so you can power through your glutes. Now we're going to hold at the top and we're going to add rotation. So you're dropping one hip down, allowing that glute to turn off, then squeeze it to lift up. Let the other hip drop down, squeeze it to lift up. Meanwhile, the knees need to be pointing straight forward. Most likely, the first 10 times that you practice this, your knees are going to be trying to rock from side to side. Do your best not to do that. You can put a big ball between your knees. Well, not a big ball, but a ball that is gonna fit there. That will help you engage your inner thighs so that you can keep your knees forward. You could also roll up a towel and put it between your knees so that you have some feedback from that tool. Okay, then we'll come back down. All right, then again, we're gonna take the information that we're learning here and we're gonna apply it. So I call this muscle memory. I don't, I didn't come up with that phrase, right? You're taking the memory of what your glutes felt like engaging in that particular exercise and you're gonna apply it to the next one. So we're now looking at the ab glute sandwich, okay? So we're gonna come onto all fours and here we're gonna do an exercise that I taught in my abs 101 workshop which is an isometric squeeze. So imagine there's a big beach ball between your arms and thighs. You're gonna try to, try to pop that beach ball. You're hugging your arms and thighs together. And as you do that, feel your abs tone up. Again, we're not tucking the butt, you're staying in neutral. Knees are gonna come together. You're gonna lift a foot up, creating a 90 degree angle with that leg. And we're pulsing up and down. Now again, in order to get the best glute workout, it's imperative that the movement is coming from your hip joint and is not coming from your low back flexing. So you keep that beach ball squeeze on and then that way you can move from your hip joint and there's no reflection of that action in your leg in your low back. Again, in other words, I'm not doing this as I move my leg. I'm squeezing that beach ball and pumping up and down. Okay. 
You can also do a turned out variation, turning the knee out and bringing it back up for a little lift. And then you could also extend the leg straight and then bend it, keeping the knee at exactly the same height as you go in and out. If the knee drops down considerably when you bend or extend, your glutes are not really going to be functioning very well in that situation and the point of the exercise is lost. So keep the knee in the same spot. I'm not going to do the other side just for um, time's sake, so feel free to pause the video for a second. Next exercise, same idea, supine heel squeeze. Laying down on your tummy, I've stacked my hands one on top of the other and resting the forehead to the hands. The heels are together, knees are shoulder distance apart. So again, you're gonna try to create that ab glute sandwich. So you're feeling for a little compression in the low belly. And then you're gonna to begin to consciously engage your glutes and squeeze your heels together. Feeling that as you squeeze the heels together, it will help to further increase the glute workout. You can hold that squeeze continually and just continually squeeze harder and harder and harder as long as you feel that glute workout. Or you could take breaks. You could release the squeeze of the heels and then go again, engage the abs, engage the glutes, and then squeeze the heels together. Okay? All right. Next topic, glutes versus other hip muscles. We talked about that a little bit at the beginning of the video. So the deep hip muscles, piriformis obturators, they are not power muscles. Your glutes are meant to be your power, okay? So what we're gonna do first here is take a thread the needle stretch. So what I've done is cross one ankle over opposite thigh. I'm taking my inside hand, threading it in between my legs, and then taking my outside hand around. The hands can come to the knee, the thigh. You could even hold on to the shin bone. Okay. You could rock it a little bit from right to left. The goal again is to create some range of motion in the hip joint before we go in to strengthen the glutes in an externally rotated exercise. So we're gonna lay down on our sides. The head could be laying flat on the arms. You could also put a pillow here. You could even prop your head up. You just wanna be mindful of how your neck feels. We're finding neutral again here, which is a little trickier to do when you're laying on your side. You have to really think about reaching your tail out behind you. Conscious engagement of your glutes. Squeeze your heels together just like you did with the previous exercise. I'm gonna lift and lower your knee. Keep checking in with yourself that you're not tucking your butt under. Squeezing those heels together, really working that leg. And again, we're looking for external rotation here. Okay. Again, doing the other side. I'm gonna move on. We're going now into a lunge. I've got some yoga blocks here to give me some support you could always use a chair. So here we're opening up the hip flexor psoas, lifting through the chest. You can definitely do this multiple times as you feel you need it. We're coming into the side leg lift. So you're gonna reach your top leg straight, engage your glutes in neutral, lifting and lowering the leg. Imagine there's a wall behind you and you're pushing your leg up against that wall, continually wrapping those glutes as you lift. Shoulders, hips are stacked. Other side again, and then we're coming into a squat. You're gonna squeeze the heels together, work the glutes, stay in neutral. You can hold that for as long as you like. Lastly, the deadlift, working from neutral Hinging forward, use glutes and hamstrings to bring you up. You could do both legs or a single leg. Pretty challenging on balance. Thank you.